Oh, hi. Yes, we are back in the classroom. Hope you enjoyed our uh, foyer into the wilderness there. Uh, welcome to video lecture four. Four, five, something like that. Four, I believe, as we close up chapter one in Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. I have three things I want to talk about before your quiz tomorrow, unless you're watching this in the future and your quiz is not tomorrow, in which case, a future quiz. Um, the first is European failure, right? I was out in the woods there having a, a wonderful, wonderful time. No, that's not the failure of the Euro. It was enjoyable. I was at Rock Cut State Park, had a blast with people who were taking nice pictures and everything. But it gets cold, and the bugs get bad, and it, you know, it's, it's kind of like camping. It's only pleasant until like 40 mile an hour winds and rainstorm and mosquitoes hits you. And then uh, the nostalgia is kind of lost. You're, you're, you want to go back to your hotel room or back to your, your home and be uh, outside, of, uh, outside of nature instead of outside in nature. Right? And the Europeans feel the same thing. Uh, they're living out there for months, and you can tell that nature's taking a toll on it. So a couple examples we've already seen. We saw the rail car, right? The rail car that was tipped over. Uh, so a, a railroad that was failed at uh, being made. Marlowe's steamboat. When he gets there, he doesn't have a nice new boat waiting for him. Steamboat is blah, 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 at the bottom of the river, right? And the rail car. I don't know how to draw tipped over. Anyway, so that's at the bottom of the river. And then the final one we talked about is the um, the hippo incident. So you have you have this big hippo that wanders into the camp, and everyone's like, pew pew pew, shoot at the hippo, which doesn't do anything. So they have lots of bullets, but what do they not have any of for their steamboat? No rivets. So over and over and over again in the novel, we see the Europeans not as this, um, this conquering force, not as someone who's conquering the jungle, but someone who's being conquered by the jungle. And that's an important distinction to make here. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, the ground motif. So there's multiple, multiple instances of ground or earth in this, uh, in this novel. We see over and over again, man, I got it two boards. We see over and over again talk of the earth. So I hope you got all that. If not, rewind just a couple seconds and hit the pause button. You can copy those notes down. Uh, we see the ground over and over again, this earth motif, so to speak. Motif, it would be uh, something that comes up over and over again, like a theme or a parallel that runs through it. Uh, we see it right at the very beginning with Gravesend. Right, Gravesend, the city. So grave, obviously, being sent to the grave would be under the earth as part of the earth. Um, Belgium and Brussels is described as a whited, what? Exactly, wonderful, sepulcher. Whited sepulcher. Spelling, not sure. Whited sepulcher, right? That biblical language, this whitewashed tomb. Again, something of the earth, um, and not positive earth imagery, so to speak. Um, and then we have one other one that I'm going to talk about here for just a second. So let me uh, hit the lights. Don't worry, though. they'll come back on. And we're going to pivot. Oh, look at the nice classroom in the dark. Wait, wait a second. What is that? Oh my gosh, it's a demon. It's a German demon of death. Uh, yes, that is Mistopheles. Uh, ooh, ooh, you can't really see him. Oh, that's probably good, though. He's terrifying. Oh, okay, well, he's flying. See, woo flying. Okay, Mistopheles is this German demon who first appears in Faustus, um, which is a, a play by Christopher Marlowe uh, around the same time as Shakespeare. That's not important for your quiz, though. That's just side information. Mistopheles is this German demon, right? Uh, and he, he steals people's souls, right? He argues uh, for their souls as he does in Faustus. So not a good dude. And you can see he's pictured over a city here being all demonic, gargoyle-y. Um, Nothing enjoyable. Okay, you got what you got. What Faustus looks like. It should be kind of a scary image. Watch out, lights coming back out. Watch your eyes. I don't know. Think that hurts over the internet, but it certainly does in the classroom. So Mistopheles, Mistopheles is described in the text here. Let me find the page for you. Marlowe is going 
and looking at uh, the manager in this central station. Uh, maybe it's described in the text. I believe it is. Yes, it is. Well, I know it's described in the text. Where is described in the text? There it is. Okay, page 31 in my text, which is this one. I let him run on this paper mache Mistopheles, so this paper mache demon. And it seemed to me as if I tried, I could poke my forefinger through him, like you're poking through paper mache, like a, a basket or a vase. I don't know what you make paper mache of. Um, you could poke your forefinger through him and would find nothing inside but a little loose dirt. So even the even the demons, even these European demons, are not actually that tough. They're, they're made of dirt, right? They're paper mache and dirt. So again, we have that ground imagery. And an important word that we're going to see in the future chapters more and more often is when he talks about un- earthed, right? So something that's unearthed or doesn't belong to the earth. Um, and Conrad uses that word all the time as they descend down the Congo River, almost unworldly, right? The idea of not being part of the earth. Uh, the final thing I want you to remember is the El Dorado um, Exploring Expedition. Don't forget about them. I'll use a different color for you. El Dorado Exploring Expedition. That would be E to the three right, he cubed uh, El Dorado Exploring Expedition, that's the uncle of the manager, so he's the nephew. Um, they wander into the camp at the very end of the chapter, and they're not really nice people. They're there without any pretense just to, to rip treasure out of the earth, and what, do they, uh, what role do they serve as part of the plot? Um, so that's all we have for chapter one. Hope you watch all four videos and that can help you and follow the study guides, and uh, best of luck on your quiz tomorrow. I know you guys are going to do great. I'll see you in chapter two. Bye.